Uh, sorry for the delay. My name is Sasha Siegel. Um, I'm going to talk with you today about um, how GitOps can actually um, accelerate your uh, CI CD pipeline, in, including your infrastructure and all the other things. Uh, I don't have much time, but a lot of slides, so I'm going to start right ahead. Um, as a pre-sales consultant, I'm always working with uh, different companies and I'm actually having a look into the architecture and the workflows and we're trying to combine them and make a global standard kind of way to have a CI CD pipeline everybody can benefit from. And that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk first about the use case uh, we're looking into a bit uh, deeper and then I'm going to present to you what kind of tooling we're using during the CI CD pipelining to get an actually deployment um, on a cloud agnostic way uh, for every customer. What I want you um, to have as a outcome today is that, uh, that you remember to always use GitOps because this is the only way to go. Um, Git is our friend and the software supply chain management can also be done um, on GitOps. When you're handling any software, even if it's not your own, just handle them as if they are your own. Um, work with different teams together, always collaborate um, by using open source software. Um, there's always um, the benefit of sharing your experience and the easiest way is to do is this on uh, the Git way uh, as well. And if you also keep it um, declarative, like using it in a programmatic way, it's always easier to understand the actual outcome because you're always, um, com com um, you're always um, looking at the differences between the state and the should-be state. Okay, let's start with the uh, actual use case first. So um, nowadays, um, especially th since Git, Git uh, DevOps, um, you always have to um, build it yourself and you have to take care of it yourself because it became easier, kind of. And um, that's what we're looking at. You're always having a IT landscape where you're using multiple tools. If it's just an open stack infrastructure, um, there are dozens of um, uh, plugins and tools you have to take care of. And also when you're doing Kubernetes clusters, you have to um, take a lot of um, care of them. Um, we're looking today at a uh, application uh, layer. So um, you, uh, every software team creates its own individual app and it relies on a lot of open source tools. May it be some database management tool, uh, a message broker system, or even the ingress controller inside a Kubernetes cluster. All those um, have to be deployed and always have to be in a software development lifecycle managed in an easy way. And in the best case, uh, standardized. So if you go in with the GitOps lifecycle, we always have to repeat this software development lifecycle for each and every um, software we're using. Um, this can be a huge uh, workload uh, for the um, development teams and uh, just for the individual um, app you're actually um, developing as a development team. You're having the software engineering team who is actually pu pushing to Git. Um, the Git uh, repository just confirms it or it gets merged, and then it goes through the um, continuous integration pipeline or delivery pipeline by uh, building the uh, containers maybe and pushing it, uh, the resources somewhere, updating the configs for your um, uh, application, and then it goes over to some system engineers or the users. The users also have to check, are the configs up to date? Is it running in my runtime environment? In this case, Kubernetes. And only when they tested it on development and staging, they can uh, push it to production. And this has to be repeated many, many times. And um, thanks to CI/CD and thanks to third-party software, um, there's um, one huge uh, workload also already done, the coding of the software. So we can actually just take the different um, software components, the modules, put them all, mesh them all together, and we have our IT landscape. And all we have to do now is just the system engineering work by configuring, configuring every, each and every application. Um, since Lock4 Shell, um, a lot of uh, people still wonder how can they um, take care of all this um, supply, uh, all, of all the software we're using from the open source community, and that's what we wanted to achieve. We wanted to set up um, the whole environment to the runtime environment, starting on the left from your individual uh, uh, application repository, taking all the 
building blocks, we call that. So the third party software measured all together in the Git and then just um, push out uh, or just um, deliver um, a whole setup uh, which is pre-configured and always um, can be used on any infrastructure you choose. So um, we're going to talk about the first part. So we're um, talking about the software supply chain tool, uh, um, um, tool chain actually, and um, what kind of tools we used here. So the basic layer for our uh, pipeline is um, GitLab as a Git repository and GitLab CI as a environment to run um, the tasks um, for the CI CD pipeline. We're always expecting the software delivery to have two different things, the configuration and the actual package. In this case, for Kubernetes, it's Helm, Helm charts or Helm files and a Docker image or multiple Docker image. And then we have to uh, dif uh, different um, tasks to actually accomplish. May it be some CVE scans um, of the Docker images, some config templates for the Helm files to uh, give some individualization course, um, policy testing, um, deprecation testing, all this have to be the, has to be done before we can actually go to production to make sure that everything is running smoothly. So the GitLab CI stages we defined um, are six in total. So there's a .pre stage, which actually uh, uh, gathers all resources we can say are always the same for each and every uh, um, building block or for each um, software service. Then we have a linting stage where we're trying to uh, find out uh, where we're trying to lint mostly. Uh, we're building it um, just to uh, make sure that the build um, process um, done, is done correctly. Then we go into the test stage. Uh, we're gonna do a release where we're bundling it all again, and the post stage, we're just cleaning it up. The, the main goal is to offer all those uh, uh, um, software services on the right um, on a global CI CD type CI-CD pipeline, which is configured um, all the same. In the pre-stage, as I said, we have different scripts or checks um, for style guides, semantic versioning, policy testing, and so on and so forth. Um, it's pretty small work you have to do there, and besides um, all the linting, which is always uh, um, part of some tooling, um, you have to be pretty precise. So um, also including the fact that you want to be declarative, so we're don't, doing this in a programmatic way. Uh, we chose to do this in Python scripts. Everybody talks Python nowadays. If you're having any uh, uh, linting uh, libraries or something, we always uh, found them uh, in those libraries already existing. So we work with the people together, uh, find out um, how the linting libraries work there, or the deep diff, and um, that's the first one to go to actually create um, uh, the first um, templates. Um, I've been talking about linting before in the first stage, but um, uh, the main uh, stage uh, starts actually here. So um, we have to check the um, standardized resources, may it be some Helm charts, um, code changes which, were, um, uh, which can be re uh, read out uh, of release notes, um, or even some dependencies. That's what we're scanning here. This is not only linting itself, but um, it's a huge part of it. Uh, the focus uh, in linting is also um, to see if everything is done correctly on here. So that's why we chose another tool on here, uh, the Open Policy uh, Agent um, extension, if you may, uh, or extra tooling uh, called ConfTest. This give, give, gave us the opportunity to have a um, easy readable uh, config uh, and easy writable also. Uh, to make sure that um, each and every resource we're actually um, gathering um, is uh, pre um, ready for our uh, infrastructure or, or our runtime environment itself. In the testing stage, we have to um, split the first time. Uh, remember that we wanted to build a pipeline for each and every tool uh, the same way. We now have to actually split it up because um, now each and every tool has some test cases which can't be generalized for, for the other ones. So if we're talking about um, the specific cases, we're talking about smoke testing, um, the in initial deployments, uh, some uh, best practices are also gonna be included in here. And um, this is what, what's been done in this state, stage. 
Um, first of all, because we are now individualizing a bit more, we also want to offer to each and every uh, contributor the opportunity to make it individual itself. So uh, we're extending the Helm charts with Helm files. So we're having um, ready-to-go templates and also have some Go templating uh, to make it um, easier uh, for each um, software and system engineer to contribute um, to the testing uh, environment and especially to the best practices configs. Oh. I talked about the smoke tests. Um, I can only uh, recommend the um, Golang itself because um, this is more close to the infrastructure or the runtime environment uh, we are having the most experience with, with Kubernetes. And um, th there we can actually uh, write the smoke tests um, more precisely. The last stage I, I want to talk about is the release stage. That's the stage where we are only bundling uh, the different Helm charts. Uh, we are uh, putting in some more best practices config from the Go templates we've created. Uh, we are offering um, all the release notes, uh, the docs and workarounds. Um, if there are any, um, when you're trying to update from one version to another. And we're also offering uh, for an easier user, uh, use case, uh, different CI templates. So if you're trying to um, 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 create a, a deployment pipeline, on you, uh, by yourself, you can always rely on some templating we've done in the um, global settings. Um, there's uh, one um, tool uh, I want to recommend you highly. This is Renovate. The Renovate uh, bot um, actually uh, gives you the opportunity to, to check automatically for uh, each and every version. Uh, this is described in your uh, CI CD pipeline lining and in your Git repository. And uh, we had uh, over 100 updates per week for those 12 building blocks we've had um, in uh, January. Okay, so this was a lightning talk. Um, so what is left? I've been talking about the CI/CD uh, pipelining, and if we go on this, through the, the software development lifecycle, uh, we have the. Uh, the code checking, we have the building, we have the testing, we have the releasing, and even um, some um, stuff um, you can just deploy and run. Um, but there are two important things missing. This is one's monitoring and uh, operations management. And the big question is um, how we tackle this. Um, operations management and alerting is always a very individual and reactive task. You can't automate those um, things. You just have to experience it. Uh, that's just uh, like the hell we're working in. So, but um, there's uh, one uh, big approach I can uh, always recommend, and that's how we work with our customers and internally. This is always shifting left. As soon as you have made the experience, everybody's gonna actually enjoy um, having uh, um, some uh, your experience as well. Um, so share it by shifting left. Have the experience, uh, write a smoke test or something, and others will take care of standardizing it the way we do, for example. The benefits are, I hope, pretty, uh, pretty obvious. So um, we can integrate multiple services into runtime, um, 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 into runtime environments, cloud agnostic. We can also have um, a already prepared CI CD pipelining uh, for a new service. So if you're creating new services, all you have to do, you just uh, put it up there and then you can start with shifting left right off the start. Um, and the collaboration also means that you don't have to work all by yourself. Um, you're getting extra resources by everyone who uses them. Um, this is actually the pretty neat one. And the transparency, transparency of course. Because we do it on GitOps, we are uh, working programmatically. You're always um, being transparent with what you're doing um, th um, during your tasks. So, I spoke pretty quickly. Um, if you didn't understand anything, just hit me up. I'm going to be here on the conference the next two days as well. Uh, you can find me on the SIS 11 booth, and uh, we can go into that um, with a more big detail. If you have any questions, just uh, go to the microphone and um, go ahead. Thank you very much for your...